So, good evening. It's already good night from Vienna. This is Amir Tsalfati. I wanted to give you a very, very short, special Middle East uh, current event update, and that is uh, regarding the effect <clears throat> of the um, Singapore summit between uh, President Trump and Chairman Kim um, on the Middle East. That effect is is already being felt, and I thought that you should know. First of all, to give you um, a quick update, um, Israel over the last 48 hours uh, dealt with two different uh, fronts. One, we uh, once again destroyed a surface-to-surface uh, missile uh, storage uh, in uh, the in Syria area that um, or a storage that uh, was um, owned by Iran and those rockets were part of the Hezbollah a um, thing uh, they they did not admit that we did anything and uh, which is good I don't think they I don't think they want to have that burden of having to somehow. Um, revenge. They are so broke. They are so confused. They are so humiliated. At this point, they really don't want to deal with that one. But another very, very surprising thing that happened today was that Israeli um, uh, drones and later on jets attacked um, several terrorist targets in the Sinai Peninsula. Believe it or not, the reports are that uh, we're helping the, the uh, Egyptian army there. And we're not the only uh, military that sends some um, forces. Apparently, the, um, the military of Bahrain sent something. This is uh, quite remarkable. Think about it. Israel and Bahrain are helping Egypt fighting Muslim terrorists. These are the last days, definitely. I mean, if, if you really think about it. So these are two things that happen in our neighborhood, but uh, let's talk a little bit about the Trump-Kim summit and what happened. In the background of the successful meeting between the two leaders, we already heard two things. One, that the U.S. ambassador to Israel, David uh, um, Friedman, was called back to Washington. And the second is that Gerald Kushner is about to come to Israel and Saudi Arabia. And this is the thing. Um, Very encouraged with with what what happened in in the Singapore summit, President Trump decided that this is the time for him to to deal with the Middle East. He... uh, he promised that there will be an ultimate deal, the deal of the millennium. He promised that uh, it's going to be much bigger than what people think. And from what I know, this is what we're going to see. First of all, I believe that they're going to try and change the order in which things are being done. I believe that there is going to be a proposal for Israel to have relations with Saudi Arabia and Bahrain and maybe even the United Arab Emirates. And the idea is to somehow ignite the peace process by, um, by showing um, that there is peace between Sunni Muslims and the Jewish state of Israel. And that is in order to push the Palestinians to... Uh, to make some concessions, because one thing is for for sure, one thing is very, very clear. From what I know and from the the little that was leaked from the documents that are running between Washington, Jerusalem, and Riyadh, the Palestinians are going to get probably the worst deal they ever got uh, in the last 20 years. If you think about it, Yitzhak Rabin in 1994 was uh, engaged in in a process called the Oslo Accord that eventually was supposed to give the Palestinians nearly 100% of the West Bank. In other words, even Jerusalem was on the table and the old city of Jerusalem, including the Temple Mount, not to mention other issues 
that uh, over the past years, Israel realized are not even something we are able to um, consider. From what I understand, the American administration is going to offer the two sides the following thing. The Palestinians will receive immediately control over the 50% of the West Bank. No Israeli town or, or large settlement in the West Bank will have to be evacuated. Palestinian capital will be Abu Dis, which is a, a, a neighborhood on east of Jerusalem, not part of Jerusalem of today. It's, it's in the West Bank. It's something that Israel controlled um, uh, even in the military, um, in the military uh, government in the 1990s already, when I was still there. It was never cons considered part of Jerusalem. There's a wall between that part and Jerusalem. And the Palestinians uh, will have to also agree that they have no weapon and they, that, um, that th that's the end of the conflict. Um, needless to say that I don't believe that they will accept it. But if you really think about it, since the Saudis and maybe the Bahrainians and the United Emirates, since they're already going to have some sort of a peace with Israel, the Palestinians will probably turn to the axis of evil. And that, that is, of course, Iran and Turkey and also Russia. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that when Russia is bleeding financially and Saudi and excuse me and the uh, Turks are bleeding financially and of course the Iranians are really bleeding financially right now. The Palestinians might be a good excuse to somehow come and settle the score with Israel. Uh, not to mention the fact that um, we have another issue that is really, really burning right now. What will Kim Jong-un is going to do with his nuclear weapon? Uh, I told you in the last um, report that um, in a very strange manner, ever since Donald J. Trump decided to meet with, the, with Kim Jong-un, uh, suddenly both the Russians and the Syrians are showing a great interest in meeting with the North Korean leader. And um, you know, and I know, that the North Koreans helped, uh, not just helped, built a nuclear reactor for the Syrians, a reactor that Israel destroyed in 2007. And I'm just wondering, you see, I don't trust Kim Jong-un. I mean, with all the respect, I would love to see peace in the uh, Korean Peninsula, but I don't trust the man. I never did, and I don't think I will ever do, but... Um, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that um, he wants to denuclearize. Um, the question is, who will he give those weapons, or maybe who will he sell those weapons to? Um, and I, uh, I'm wondering if um, Syria is not going to be part of this whole thing, and I'm wondering if that's not going to be maybe the reason why Damascus might be destroyed. You never know. One thing is for sure. What happened in Korea is going to greatly affect the Middle East, not only when it comes to maybe a weapon that might come uh, our way, but mostly with the very very heavy pressure that we're going to have shortly on the Middle East as a, a result of the Trump ultimate deal, both to the Israelis and the Palestinians. As I said before, both um, David Friedman, the ambassador to Israel, is now in the U.S., and Gerald Kushner is almost making his way to Saudi Arabia and to Israel, they are wrapping up right now a deal that um, Israel is not going to like, but we trust that the Palestinians will not like it even more. And uh, 
as always, they are going to say no. But this time it's going to be, it's going to hurt even more. See, Hamas failed. We, we, we don't have almost anything anymore. They realized everything they did in the Gaza Strip is just not working. Hamas failed big time. Um, the Palestinians realized that really America is not on our side right now and they cannot torture Israel in the UN because America is not going to allow that to happen. America, by the way, changed uh, completely its uh, policy. It's no longer just defending Israel in the UN by vetoing any anti-Israeli uh, um, um, resolution, but America is going to actively punish countries that are, are, are unjust or unrightfully uh, going to come against Israel for, for nothing. America just announced that they're not going to allow almost 200 nations to um, treat one country in such disrespect and in an unfair uh, manner um, non-stop. America is going to use its financial position um, as a leverage or as a maybe as a weapon uh, to uh, threaten those countries that are are always doing that to us. And they're, they're basically, America decided, we're going to tell them, if you're going to continue behaving like that in the UN, you're not going to have business with America. And many of them are going to, to, to think twice before they do that. So we see a, definitely a great change, uh, a wonderful change, a c continuing, it's a natural continuation to this unbelievable administration that we have right now in the US. I know that uh, people will immediately attack Donald Trump for uh, offering that peace deal, um, but let me explain something. I believe, and I said that so many times, and you know that, I believe that uh, President Trump know that um, the Palestinians are not really interested in having any deal with Israel um, at the moment. Uh, he, he, he understands that. He understands that... Uh, uh, people who want peace with Israel cannot sponsor families of terrorists. It doesn't go together. He also understands that no matter what he's going to offer the Palestinians, they will say no because they will never get what they want. It, Jerusalem is the number one problem. Jerusalem is never going to be their capital. The minute the United States recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, basically it is not recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of any other country or any other future state. The Palestinians also understand that the Saudis are not going to fight for them or lie on the ground for them. The Palestinians understand that Egypt and Jordan are, are also not going to um, uh, just uh, fight for them. They have their own problems right now. The king of Jordan is facing a very, very big challenge right now. He did get the $2.5 billion aid from Saudi Arabia, as I reported earlier. But the problem is that uh, the um, opposition towards the king is now uh, not only for um, financial reasons. Uh, the Bedouins themselves, who were the loyalists, the, those who, um, on whom he could lean and trust, um, even they themselves are coming against him right now, which is, uh, which is quite remarkable. Um, so um, we have that. Um, and then, uh, so the, they have their own problems, and this, the, uh, the Egyptians have their problems as well. Uh, and so the Palestinians will really have hard time right now because the only countries that will vow to fight for them and to stand for their rights will be Turkey and um, and also um, Iran. So we are going to see a very, very, very interesting thing uh, uh, happening as uh, the peace plan of uh, President Trump is going to be on the table very soon. I will not run and, uh, and uh, jump to any conclusion that uh, Trump is going to divide Israel or divide Jerusalem and all of that. Every U.S. administration is trying to bring about a 
peace deal between the uh, Palestinians and the Israelis. In fact, the first administration that is not using the mantra Palestinian state and two states for two people is the current administration. President Trump did not say anywhere that it's absolutely the only solution. He says, in fact, you guys can call it whatever you want, a state, uh, you know, uh, some sort of, uh, some sort of uh, um, autonomy, uh, autonomy uh, some sort of, uh, um, I don't know, any, some political creature that, uh, you know, call it whatever you want, he said. Um, it's for the two sides to decide what it is. And he even, uh, he even said that one state, two states, three states, it's up to the, the parties to figure out. President Trump also is determined not, after he recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, not to give the holy sites of the Jewish people, such as the Western Wall, to Palestinian control. Something, by the way, that Bill Clinton considered doing and Barack Obama considered doing. So we must understand that alongside with the effort to bring about a solution, we must not forget that this type of solution, A, will be immediately rejected by the Palestinians, B, uh, at least will serve the president uh, in saying, I tried, I did my best, and if they don't want it, then that's okay, that's their problem. But what I think that we need to also think about is this. President Trump want to make America great again. And uh, one of the things he said in the press conference uh, right after the summit with uh, Chairman Kim was um, that the U.S. will stop its war games uh, together with South Korea, A, because they're provocative, which is true. I mean, you're... you're uh, shooting thousands of rockets and, ex and explosions right in front of the other country. And, and the other country knows that it's all about a fight against them. Then he says, look, if we talk peace with them, we cannot do that right to their face. But then he said something else. He said, the cost of, the, of, of those war games is enormous. To fly all of those uh, B-12s uh, um, from Guam, it costs too much money. To leave more than 200,000 U.S. soldiers in the Korean Peninsula is ex super expensive. Basically, what he said is this. I uh, was elected to recover America and America's economy and America's military. I'll do whatever it takes uh, to minimize the American presence in areas that we have no interest in. So... I think that the South Koreans and the Japanese are a little bit nervous after this, uh, uh, this summit. And, and, and they're nervous because they're not sure where it's going to lead. Israel is not nervous because Israel uh, already is preparing to face the next war all by ourselves. Uh, and remember, Ezekiel is very clear about the fact that um, that war will be won only because God is going to supernaturally intervene and win the war for Israel. And uh, so the nations will know that He is God. So side by side with uh, the peace plans, uh, we see also the American efficiency uh, in, in cutting all the things that can be cut and needs to be cut uh, for the sake of the rising American economy. So Israel understands we're all alone when it comes to facing the enemy. We might get weapons from America. We might get some um, assistance when it comes to equipment. But I don't believe that President Trump wants to see thousands of American soldiers on the ground fighting uh, once again in the Middle East. Um, and that's, that's basically what's going on. By the way, in Syria right now, just so you know, ISIS is regaining uh, control over several areas. The Russians are extremely tired. Um, the Iranians are broke. And we can see that, uh, the, uh, that ISIS is taking advantage of it. And uh, they, uh, uh, they just come out of nowhere 
hit the, the Syrian army, and then go back to the desert. And they caused the Syrians, the Russians, and the, uh, all the other forces. There are so many casualties over the last, over the last few days. Um, there were some fake reports recently on Israeli uh, Israel calling thousands of uh, reserve uh, soldiers, uh, fake reports on uh, preparation for an immediate war, fake reports on some uh, so many issues, such as a, a missile that was supposed to hit uh, President Trump and all that. I, I need you to understand there's so many crazy people online right now and irresponsible teachers that are spreading rumors that are baseless. Trust me, um, everybody will know if Israel is calling reservists by the thousands. We did have a surprise um, drill, which I reported a few days ago, but that's it. Uh, it's something that uh, Israel, in its highest level of military command planned but of course the regular soldiers on you know they did not know about that and the idea is to surprise them so to see how they behave when a war is breaking out and they are called immediately to return to their units that's all to say that thousands of thousands of Israeli soldiers are called to uh, reserve duty and they are moving forces in the north it's irresponsible and it's not true um, of course, uh, the region is bracing for the uh, expected Syrian assault on the southern part of, of Syria. But I don't think Israel is going to allow anything that might jeopardize its, uh, its security to happen. I think everybody knows that. We made it very clear. And uh, I don't think uh, it, it is going to happen. So it's a very fragile area. And as I said... Because things were going on very well in the Korean Peninsula, President Trump is very, very determined right now to ignite and, uh, and push for, uh, uh, for a, uh, some sort of a, a movement uh, in the Israeli Arab, um, on the, the Israeli Arab uh, axis right now. Again, uh, Kushner is on his way to Saudi Arabia and Jerusalem. Uh, the, the ambassador of America to Israel, David Friedman, was called back to Washington. And um, they're, they're talking about several things. We may not like everything, but I can tell you one thing. The Palestinians will surely not like what they're going to see on the, on the paper. And uh, the Saudis are... are being called to the scene to push the Palestinians. And if the Palestinians are going to continue saying no, the Saudis will say, well, then we're going to have peace with Israel uh, or at least normalize the relationship with Israel. And we're not going to wait for you. You're not going to hold uh, us hostage when we need Israel right now in the battle against Iran. So very, very interesting things happening. I believe that the North Korean sum, uh, American summit is reigniting the Middle East peace process. And I believe that the uh, ultimate deal will be shortly put on the table. And I believe that um, that will cause a lot, a lot, a lot of frustration, mostly from the side of the Palestinians. Jerusalem, once again, is going to be a big problem because it will not be given to them and they will demand it and they will definitely call other Muslims to come and help them, such as Turkey and Iran. Very, very interesting things are ahead of us and keep your eyes up because we are definitely, definitely uh, seeing amazing things. I'm dressed like that and I'm tired like that because I just finished three hours of preaching and teaching in a church. Uh, more than a thousand people showed up from Italy and from um, Germany and, of course, from Austria um, and uh, from Romania. People came and the people of God are hungry for the Word of God. 
And it is so encouraging to see a lot of young people. And I want to tell you one thing. We just got done with our young adults tour where 50 people from more than from six different continents came. We're expanding our young adults ministry right now. We just opened a Facebook page, Behold Israel Young Adults. We're going to uh, next year have two buses and we're going to add the Petra and the Red Sea to the Young Adults Tour. Uh, I want to tell you that we have uh, great news. Someone, the father of several or, or of a couple people that were on this tour saw how his daughters uh, were greatly affected by it and the lives really changed. And he decided that he wants to sponsor 10 young adults for the next tour. We're hoping for more things like that because we want to bring many, many people who cannot afford uh, to be on those tours. We want, to, if we want to influence this young generation. We want to take them out of their computer screens and cell phone screens and and we want them to see the land. We want them to behold Israel. And we're so, so excited about this thing. Another exciting news, uh, um, Behold Israel is going to be on, on his channel. His channel, the uh, online uh, Christian TV. Um, we're going to air our first program on June 22nd. And I am so excited about that. His channel actually contacted us. They wanted us to be there. And we, of course, agreed. <laughs> you don't say no to such thing. And um, we are so thankful. And uh, beyond that, I also want you to know that um, I think we talked about uh, the online store that uh, our supplier opened for people who want to buy some of our logo products. It is, again, it, as I said before, guys, we're not uh, selling anything as a ministry. We're a nonprofit. We are not dealing with merchandise. But the supplier from where we buy our shirts and hats and jackets um, to our own staff, he allowed, who oh, graciously uh, um, accepted our request and he opened a website called BeholdIsraelStore.com and uh, we just have all the logo uh, merchandise there including, by the way, bumper stickers that says, I am a watchman. It's very, very beautiful. We designed them uh, and now you can actually get them. These are bumper stickers. I am a watchman from Ezekiel and uh, our logo is there and that's great to see that uh, when you drive that you're not the only watchman. You see other people watchmen as well. So again, uh, that's not our store. We're not operating it, but uh, we're definitely benefiting from it because that guy um, said that um, part of his profit he's going to donate to the ministry. So we're very grateful to him for doing that. BeholdIsraelStore.com The young adults... Um, Facebook page is Behold Israel Young Adults, and uh, very shortly we're going to um, we're going to give you the uh, brochure of that f next year's tour and uh, the cost and everything. And hurry up! The space is limited to two buses only um, for 2019, 2020. If we're still here, I would like to have a five buses tour. We want to do a like a mini. Young Adults Conference. We're going to bring Israeli worship teams to um, to worship with the young adults every evening. We're going to do Bible teachings every day, and we want to affect that generation and send them back home with their lives changed. So thank you again for everything. Thank you for praying for me. I'm here in Vienna, Austria. I'm going to continue to Romania. I'll be in Portugal later on this month, and. In July, I will be in Japan and Australia and New Zealand as well. In September, I'll be in South Africa, Canada and America. And um, I could really, really use your prayers. So I thank you very much. And let's finish this broadcast with a prayer. Yevarechecha Adonai v'yishmerecha, Ya'er Adonai pana velecha v'yichunecha, Isa Adonai pana velecha v'yasem lecha shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
May the Lord shine His face towards you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance towards you and give you peace. He gives you His shalom, that peace that surpasses all understanding, that only the Prince of Peace and the Lord of Peace 